Welcome back to Hidden Gems. My name is Arden Thomas. I'm the Syncom Small Talk Product Manager. Hidden Gems is where we show you capabilities of product that you may not be aware of, but we think you will benefit from. Any questions, comments that you have, please send them to myself, Arden Thomas. My email is right there, athomas at syncom.com. So today's Hidden Gems, it's a bit of a Hidden Gems, and it shows some some quantitative analysis as well, is be the master of your visual domain. And we're going to use some examples of presenting information using Model View Controller. And Model View Controller lets you, lets you draw just about anything you can think of. And we're going to show you also some, some data, how to use economic data that can be used to predict recessions. And Parsing data in small talk is very easy. We'll, we'll show you how to do that. We'll show you how to load, graph, and analyze data in Syncom Small Talk. So let's get started. First, what is the data that we're going to use? Let me bring this over right here. And this I have the, the links there. This is uh, FRED, which stands for Federal Reserve Economic Data. And here is GDP-based recession, uh, recession indicator index. And basically, it says if it's over 67% here, it's basically we are in a recession. Okay. That's the first piece of data. The second piece is the 10-year minus 2-year treasury, uh, treasury rate. And if it's below zero, it's said to be inverted, which means the short-term, the 2-year treasury rate, is higher than the long term, which is is atypical. Usually, your longer term rates are longer than your shorter term rate, un unless it's not, unless it's inverted. And what they also show here on the on this graph from from the Federal Reserve is that the gray areas here are where you have recessions. So we're we're going to build something similar to that. So if you want all this data, click on max for the, the maximum amount of data, and then click download, and I've downloaded it as a CSV. Right over here on the right is what this CSV file looks like. It has the date, and this is Treasury 10-year, 2-year uh, value, 10-year minus 2-year. And here's the date and the value. So that's what this looks like. So how do we parse that in? Well, let's take a quick look. Here's the, here's the method I wrote to do that. Let's take a quick walk through it. I'm going to highlight this. This is a good standard to do right here if I want to run this method. It's on the class side of my Fred class. I can do that. I can say debug. And I can debug it right here. So let's do that. Let me just size this appropriately. Here we go. And I'll step into it. Okay. So get my directory, get the file name, and construct this. Let's do that quickly. That's my file name. Okay. And it has to be the the file the directory has to be wherever you place that file. Let's say lines are an ordered collection new. And then we say the stream add end in a block, while false, lines add, stream up to the character carriage return. OK, so what that is going to do, let me click here and then say, run this to the caret. Now I should have lines. And I can see each line is, here we go. Here's each line read in from, from the file. We can still see off to the, off to the right. So now what? Well, we have those lines. Let's get each line as a CSV token. What does that look like? It simply means that I'm going to have this string, my date string, and my value string as an element right here. And if we have, we could see right here we have somewhere we have, this is probably a holiday, and we have a basically no data for that day. So we're going to remove those. Tokens reject 
if the last the last value is a, a period, we're just going to remove that, so we're not trying to do that. Columns is tokens removed first, and we can see, in fact, date and 10-year, 2-year. That's my columns right there. So my dates, dates. Let's see how we do this. Line tokens first. That's my date string. Tokens based on forward slash. So here's my tokens. 6, 1, so June 1st, 1976. So I'm going to say to the date class, give me a new day based on the date token's second. That's the one as number. Makes this, this one string a number. Month number is the date token's first is number. That's the six. And the year is the third, 1976. So let's run through that. Let's take a look at our dates. There they are. These are date objects. See, it's a date. Date is represented by how many days into the year we are. And we can, uh, the code can do everything it needs to from that. Then we get the, the values, and that's going to be the, the, second, the second item as number. And we can just go right through those. And so we have a set of dates and a set of values. Now we're going to create a, a series with the dates and the values, make it a daily series. And then it's basically, we give it a, a name, a symbol, and a name. And so let's check that out. Its name is Fred Treasury 10 minus 2 year rate. Here is the data as a series object with data and date times. And that is how we parse the data. We do the exact same thing for the, the recession data, which we, we showed you from the FRED site. It's basically the exact same thing I just did for the, uh, the Treasury 10 minus 2 to give us that data. So what's next? Well, we can present that data. If we highlight this and execute this, here is the, oops, Here is the 10-year minus 2-year. Now notice the, the line across right here is a horizontal line 0. So before we showed you how to, I've got a, a controller issue I need, to, I need to address. I'm going to overlook that for the moment. But we can see where it's below 0 because we have a horizontal line where y is 0. So how do we actually display that? Well, here I created a chart visual. And I, I, I gave it some variables, color and thickness. I'm not using that right now. But I created a horizontal line object with a Y. So I could tell it where I want it to. Here, in this case, I'm, I'm using Y is 0. And when it asks to be displayed, I say display on the graphics context in this view. So what I do to display it, I get the, the y position by asking the, the view its y value for my y, for 0. Where is that? <clears throat> and then display a line from, remember this is a point, x and y. Uh, the x position is y to the view bounds width. So it's from the left side to the right side, all at the y position, which is whatever the, the view tells us where that exists in that view. And it just says uh, graphics context display line from from here to here. And that gives us our, our horizontal line. I also have a, a horizontal line. Let's take a look at this. This is the recession, the recession data. And if you take a look at the horizontal line, that's the 67 because it says when it's above 67, according to, according to Fred, the Federal Reserve, 
it says it's likely to, uh, very likely to be in a recession once it's above 67%. So we presented line 67%. So what's next? Well, we wanted a shaded area. I said we'd do some, some visuals. Well, I showed you we did a horizontal line, which was pretty straightforward. We also wanted to have a, a shaded area in the chart. So I created an object under chart visual called vertical shade. And vertical shade has X ranges. So what does that mean? Well, we need to calculate where what the date ranges for each vertical shade are. Maybe we should show you what that looks like. So here's what we wanted. This shows the treasury data right here. And you can see when, when the, 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 the treasury curve is inverted, in other words, the two year is greater than the 10 year, we are below uh, this, this zero line. And then shortly after that, the, uh, the shaded area represents a recession where, uh, for the other information, we are above that 67. So we represent that as a shaded area. So how do we get that? Well, a couple of things. I had to write just a little bit of code to say, give me the, the basically the, the true date groups. Fred recession indicator index series closes. Is it greater than 67? Give me the date groups where that is true because those represent these areas that I want to draw gray. Okay. So I have the recession date groups and we can let's, well, let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's inspect it. Okay. Here's each one of these is a group of dates that we're in a recession. So that's, that's the data, just, just some dates. So how do we present those dates? Well, right here, those dates that you just saw, those are the X ranges for each X range due. Well, it's, we call it a date group. We say the left side is the view, the view date axis. Give me the X value for the date group first, the first date. And then the right side is going to be the X value for the date group last value. So if I, if I look at this again, we're saying, give me the, the left is going to be the X value for this. And the right is going to be the X value for this. That's the area that I want to be shaded. So then how do we shade it? Well, it's, as long as we're the right side is greater than zero, so we're not off to the left, not being able to see it, we make a rectangle. The rectangle has a left, right, top, bottom, and the left is the left we calculated. The right is the right we calculated. The top is zero because the in in this the zero zero is right up here, and then we count downwards. So then the bottom is the view bounds height. So that gives me the view bounds height. So that will be all the way down to the bottom of here. Remember zero starts here. The bounds height starts at the, at the bottom of this guy right here. So we have our left, right, top, bottom. That gives us our rectangle. We say to the graphics context, uh, context your, your paint is the color value light gray. That's what we present here. And then draw the rectangle filled on the GC that, that fills in this area. Uh, if we said stroked on, it would be a, a, a wire frame of this rectangle. So looking at what we've built, here's the chart. Remember, this is, this is pretty rudimentary. This is pretty fairly simple and straightforward. You, you do have to take into some of the things like I drew the, I drew the gray areas and then drew the line. So it would be on top of it. And we can do some more things with, the, with the controller to get more interaction with this chart. But this is the, this is the basics. And we can see clearly here, 
We're below zero, recession follows, below zero, recession follows. Well, close to zero here, recession followed. So it's a, it's a, a potential leading indicator of, of recessions, and here's a, a good way to present it. So let's recap. We showed you where to find the data on the, the Federal Reserve Economic Data Site, FRED, how to download it, how to parse it. We built a series, and then we, we presented that. Now, how we presented the, the line graph here, we've, we've done in past hidden gems. If you're interested in that, I, I suggest you refer to those. So we built the Treasury data. We built the Recession Indicator Index data. We presented those individually, and then we showed you how to add model view controller object, objects that would use model view controller to present a horizontal line, which we use for 0 and 67 values, how to present a, sh a visual for a shaded area. So we'd have what we, we see right here and end up with this final chart. So be the master of your visual domain. And this was, again, this was fairly rudimentary, fairly straightforward. You can do a whole lot more. Model View Controller lets you draw just about anything you can think of. And parsing data was just a, a less than a dozen lines of, of code. Then we reuse that code to, to parse in the next one. So once you've done it, like we say, in small talk, it's easy if you have an example. So now you've got some examples, and you can do uh, this kind of work relatively easily. If you have any questions, suggestions, problems, please send them to Arden Thomas, a Thomas at syncom.com. And until next time, have a great time with Syncom Small Talk. Thank you. <music>